So I wasn't really expecting this so soon, but I woke up this morning and uh, I'm actually getting some significant resistance from Tiga on the expansion into this room. I started some colonization efforts over here to the west of my empire, dangerously close to a certain player. And over time I started to uh, see heavy resistance. So within the first day or two I was able to make some progress, get to about RCL level 3 or 4 before uh, continuous quad squads started to roll up. And um, here I've tried a little, something a little bit different. Um, we've managed to get up to RCL 5 and that triggered a new response from Tiga, that being some remote harassment. So here's what it looks like. So in the room replay history we have these guys. So these are some 25 part uh, attack, 25 part move, and they've been pretty effective about taking out my um, harvester trains. So if this energy can't get back into that room, he's basically cut off all of this room's um, economic benefit while maintaining the economic losses that are a uh, result of spawning these creeps. So uh, I noticed this last night in the forums. Um, I didn't think too much of it at the time, but uh, day one of Easter weekend improved pathfinding around untowered but blocked off rooms and made harassment a bit smarter. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Well, here's an untowered room where Tika sent a quad squad last night. So it looks like his post of the Forbes is directly about this little room. We've got uh, difficult pathing here for his quad squads um, except for on this entrance and this was intentional um, probably next time I get an attack from Tigo I'll, I'll go into more depth about the strategy here but uh, if this room doesn't make it to RCL 6 um, doesn't really stand a chance. Um, it's going to be way too expensive for me to maintain this room against a constant barrage of Tiga attacks. But then again, the quad squad is not the most uh, robust. It does have some drawbacks, and um, you can see here that uh, I, I didn't have to throw a safe mode from this, uh, but I was able to kill off all those attackers. But this quad squad concept's been adopted by quite a few people. Um, here's a uh, player Danger Mouse in Shard 2, who's using a quad squad. But let's look at some of the drawbacks of the quad squad right here. So, it, you know, moderately effective. One issue here, though, that is the ranged attack is not going to do a ton of damage to this. And splitting your healing across multiple units makes it much more difficult. Um, you have more intense per tick, uh, which means more CPU use. And this issue right here, uh, you'll see it in just a second. But any break in this uh, constant stream of fire is going to allow, well, any transfer of this constant stream of fire between these creeps will remove the healing effect from these ad additional creeps. Or, um, I believe what happens here is he spawns a defending unit. So we have these hydralisks from the defender, and one of these units is able to. Uh, you know, sort of block the effect, and a second unit is able to come in and actually get the kill. So let's, let's go step back and see the uh, actual moment when it goes down. So here we have a fully, well, we have a, a partially damaged um, creep, and the loss of that tough part means that the following strike from the towers and from these two defending creeps is going to be enough to uh, destroy that armor. And as soon as that armor is gone, you don't have the damage reduction effect. So what happens here is you've got six towers in this room. So at maximum damage, you've got 3,600 uh, damage. And the towers do a reduction, oh, not the towers, the tough parts do a reduction of 70%. So times 0.3 gives you 1,080. So you need 11 tough parts to be able to tank the damage from six towers at point blank range. Here's the other thing. 
because you're only taking 1100 hit points of actual damage to your creep, you only need to have healing of 22 heal parts at full boost. So, with a little bit more tough, this unit would have been able to tank the tower damage very easily and a little bit of damage from these guys. But as soon as that first unit is lost, now you're losing these um, 15 heal parts. So unit one goes down, and now the remaining units don't have enough. Um, you know, they don't have enough heal, and they don't have any tough parts to sort of take that damage reduction. So one by one, they each get killed off. And then because these guys weren't able to regroup, the second squad has been queued up wasn't able to move into the room. So that's one example of the quad squad. Here's another example from W2F Frank. And here he's got quite a bit of tough. Um, the issue here is that he actually has more tough than is necessary. He's only fighting a six tower room, so he shouldn't need much more than that 11 at any point and I don't see any active defense yet. So, let's skip forward. Um, the issue here is that he doesn't have a lot of uh, time to live on these creeps. Like, you see when he was walking by those towers, I mean, the damage wasn't really enough. But as, as soon as the uh, creeps ran out of time to live, they one by one got knocked out by the towers. So there's some examples of, you know, quad squads, but drawbacks. The 2x2 two two layout, um, your heal is distributed across multiple creeps, and it's a lot harder to deal with uh, incoming tower fire, especially if you're using something like a scatter fire where you're t targeting multiple creeps. If you're targeting the healer creeps, you can actually, well, a lot of code bases have this vulnerability where if you're attacking the heal creep, and it takes damage, it will prioritize healing itself over healing its uh, allied unit. And because of that, it's not providing enough heal to overcome the tower uh, damage to the other allied creep. And if you do you know, a partial attack with attacks on the healers, and then a full attack for multiple ticks on the allied unit, you can usually take down that allied unit. So a lot of vulnerabilities here in the um, quad squad. So we'll see what happens with this room. Um, I'm going to have to work on some code to automate this process here, but uh, it seems to be quite effective against uh, these uh, harassment units. If I just send over um, my de designated uh, commando unit, and he's one of my colonization defenders. Uh, let's skip ahead here. So, here's the creep attacking mine. And you got my creep coming in. So, part of the vulnerability of a um, equal move to attack ratio is that once the creep takes damage, it's not able to move at full speed. Um, and because of that, um, he wasn't able to flee out this way, and a bit of a pathing issue here, but it's going into this corner. Um, don't take this advice, but that's one way you could fix this guy if he um, exited, exited to, the, to another area of the room, rather than ex, uh, trying to just do a local flee. Um, then he would be able to eventually escape, but, you know, attack by attack, he will take out these guys. So I'm going to have to work on some reassignment code for this guy and um, implement the full dynamic aspects of the combat defense. So I already have the scripts in place to actually calculate the total damage output of the enemy creeps in a room, their total heal, things like that, so I can create a counter unit um, that's able to kill it. Anyway, that's the scripts news report. Um, actually, one more piece of uh, information. 
Here's our negotiation with Tiga a few weeks ago. At least it's consistent. Um, I've, I've redacted certain elements um, to protect the sanctity of our negotiation. But I uh, offered to make him a deal, and uh, the response was quick and simple. Is that how it works? Which I think is a little interesting, because although this might be the case on Tiga's northern front, let's take a look at that southern front. Doesn't look like Tig is really spreading the love equally, especially with that new harassment code that's been implemented into his code base. I think that could be very effective against some of these remote mines. Just, just in the interest of fairness and not making deals. I mean, it'd be nice to see a little bit of uh, spreading of the love. Anyway. Thanks for watching this report about quad squads and uh, Tigus improvements. And uh, hopefully I don't see this code implemented. Auto unclaim and uh, a little more effective harassment. But uh, yeah, wish me luck.